Welcome, everyone. Welcome. We are so, so thankful and glad to have you here. Um, someone was asking me, hey, do you normally do it here or do you guys do it somewhere else? And we're so blessed. The last couple of years, we have needed to do it here because we knew we would have more people than we could fit. Although our cafeteria would fit, lunches start, as some of you know, pretty early. And so um, we needed a place big enough other than just a small classroom. And so that is a wonderful problem that we had so many people want to come. So thank you so much for wanting to come and volunteer in our school. Um, I am gonna turn it over to our PTO president to tell you more about our PTO and all about the wonderful volunteer opportunities at Rennell. Thank you so much for being here. We could not do all the wonderful things we do at Rennell without our amazing PTO and volunteers. So thank you all for being here and your interest and I can't wait to get everybody plugged in and volunteering at Rennell. This is Tracy Robertson. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. Um, this is a pretty impressive crowd. So this is really shows the dedication all the parents have to the school and to the kids. And we really appreciate you all coming out this morning. I um, also wanted to thank Val Rodriguez for putting all of this together. So thank you so much. So what, um, the way the work this morning is going to go is we're going to have each of our board members come up and with their committee heads and kind of walk you through what the volunteer opportunities are for you. Um, so at the end, hopefully, we'll cover all the information that you need, but if not, we'll, we'll be sticking around here and y'all can ask us some questions. Um, one thing I do want to point out, if you join the PTO, because um, communication is our big key right now, once you join, you'll be on our email um, mailing list. Um, also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we have grade level pages for uh, each grade on Facebook. And then also we have a fabulous website that, um, that our uh, communications coordinator, Heather Julius, is going to walk you all through at the end. So definitely we want to be able to keep you guys informed. So all of those are really good avenues to check out. Tracy, can I say one thing? I'm yes. so sorry. Yes. We are live streaming this. Oh. So I just wanted you to know so that um, those that couldn't come today, we're going to post it online. So I just didn't want any of you to ask a question and not be aware that you were being recorded. So be careful with the questions. <laughs> it is being recorded. Okay, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I am going to now turn it over to our treasurer, uh, Nikki Miller. She is going to walk you through our budget this year. So not only is this our um, volunteer breakfast, it's also our first general meeting of the year. So here you go. Perfect. Thank you. All right, hi, I'm Nikki Miller, I'm the treasurer, and I'm going to walk you through the budget, as Tracy mentioned. So we'll start here. This looks really similar to those of you that were here last year. Our budget is pretty comparable every year, but I'll walk you through all of our line items so you're aware of um, what we're fundraising for, how much we plan to fundraise, and what we're spending money on. So we're going to start with income. You'll see that here. We have uh, two major fundraising um, initiatives. We have a fall fundraiser, which is Step It Up. Um, and so we are projecting 84,000 from Step It Up. So one thing to call out here, um, over the past year, we renegotiated our contract with Step It Up and we now are retaining an even higher percentage of the net funds that are being raised. So we keep 70% in cash. Um, another about 20-ish percent, maybe 25% goes to uh, prizes. And so the, the team that, um, that we contract with to do Step It Up, they just keep 10% of all the funds that are raised. That's what they pay their administration and their travel and, you know, Dave Awesomeness comes out of that. So just wanted to make sure that was clear. I know that's been a question that's come up. Um, we're also planning to raise 13000 net from the spring fundraiser. Um, and then about $4,000 for membership dues. Next one. Um, so looking at minor fundraising, you guys are probably familiar with these initiatives, but to walk you through them, School supplies, we net about $2,500. That's our budget. Now, to clear that part up as well, that's about $3 a pack. So it's not, I mean, it hasn't been raised in terms of what we're uh, selling these supply packs to parents for. It's about $3. That is, it's a small budget line item, but we felt like we needed to make a little bit. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into that as a PTO board, getting those prepared in your kids' classes. Um, Spirit Shop, we net about $4,000. Spirit Nights, 5,500 um, across all the Spirit Nights for the year. Spirit Shirts, about 8,000. Corporate Sponsorships, that's a new initiative for this year. So if you've seen some of the posts that we've had this year, we're looking for corporate sponsors. Um, and if you have any questions on it, if you own a business or know someone who does, feel free to talk to one of us. Um, we can walk you through what the benefits of corporate sponsorship is. Um, other, that's like Kroger, or some of you guys have, you know, have signed up with Kroger to give a percentage of, um, of your purchases to um, 
a not for profit, we get some money from there and a few other ones. Um, and then yearbook, we're projecting to make about five thousand dollars from you. So what that looks like for a net income perspective, the PTO is looking to raise one hundred and thirty-seven thousand for this year. Now, what will that all be spent on? Next slide. Um, so thirty thousand dollars is earmarked for school requested items. That's like kind of a blanket number because things come up throughout the year. Whether it's we bought a poster printer last year that was you know a few thousand dollars. We did some banners to, uh, for the hallways that um, you know tell where the various grade levels um, are located. Things like that. But it's going to be things that Meredith and the administration, the administrative team, come up with as needs within um, the school. Um, we spent $25,000 on field trips. Now to re just kind of talk about that for a bit, field trips are not paid for by CFISD. So if we didn't pay this, our kids would not go on field trips. So we pay for every grade, every student to go on these field trips, transportation and admin or admission for wherever they go. Ready to Grow Garden, we paid $13,000 to um, the organization that puts on the Ready to Grow Garden program. So that's, um, some retired CFISD teachers who do that uh, garden program for our kids. So ask any of your kids, they all participate in there and get to um, help with some of the gardening there. Um, sophomore and apps. So we get our weekly emails from our teachers on S'more. Um, that software is paid for by PTO. Um, other things that your kids use at home to work on their math or their reading, a lot of it's paid for by PTO. Um, teaching consultants. So this year we earmarked nine thousand dollars. We're sharing the cost of a reading specialist consultant. There's a new reading um, program that the, that the district is requiring each school to utilize, and so we've got a consultant coming in to teach the teachers how to best uh, teach this new curriculum. Um, grade level school supplies. So. Um, we all get tired of getting the emails from our teachers saying, hey, we've run out of glue sticks, we've run out of pencils. And so we tried to earmark a, a piece of the budget for those um, those items so that maybe we can get less of those emails. I know that gets old towards the end of the year. So that was our goal with this line item. Science consumables, um, those fun things that the teachers like to do when they need, you know, uh, marshmallows for something or they need, you know, toothpicks. This is the stuff that we're going to pay for versus getting those kind of geniuses at home. All right, um, student parties, we spend $15,500. That's holiday party, end of year party, and we contribute a little bit towards the fifth grade party. Now, that's mainly fundraised by fifth grade parents, but we do contribute um, a few thousand dollars to that. Field, or no, hospitality. $10,000 is earmarked for hospitality for the year. That's each month, um, you know, Danielle will walk you through, but each month there's an event for the teachers. Um, we also do holiday gifts for all of the staff. Um, field day, we have five thousand dollars earmarked there. Um, that's for supplies for field day. I think in the past, uh, each class has had sign of geniuses that the room parents pulled together, and it kind of felt unfair to be honest. Like there were some classes that had tons of stuff on; they were super spirited. Then there were some that had nothing; it just didn't feel right. So last year, we created this new line item so that all the classes had all the same spirit wear and things for field day. Um, community outreach. This is a new um, initiative that we that we started last year. So we've adopted a school, Emory, who's here at CFISD, um, and so we've earmarked twenty five hundred for some monthly um, events that we can do for the students and staff at Emory. Um, we've got two thousand for Star, um, mainly related to glow parties and also some waters because the kids since they since they can't bring water bottles or if they do bring it, kids forget. Um, membership, we spent about 2000 on Eurex signs. Um, volunteer breakfast and just volunteer appreciation throughout the year is 1500 Laura's legacy, 1000 I don't know if you guys know Laura Fowl. Um, she was a very involved PTO member um, and passed away a few years back. And so in her honor, we have an earmarked line on the budget for if any students or staff who's an immediate family member, we send flowers or gifts to the family. Um, if it's a child, it might be a gift card, but for adults, it's six dollars. Um, we have some fees with Stripe and PayPal. You guys have seen we use uh, PayPal a lot more. It makes it a little bit easier this year, but we are a business, so we could charge some fees. Um, and then the last item is random PTO supplies. We might need a wagon. We might need little things, sales tax um, that we need to. Really, that's a pass through. Like if you guys buy a T-shirt, you pay sales tax, and then I pay it to the government. So that's that piece of it, and then insurance for the PTO. 
So um, net expenses at 143,100, slightly higher than the income, but I'll show you why. So if we go to the next slide, um, we began the year with 49,411. Now, that's a little higher than I think I would ideally have rolling into the next year, but we have tons of front of the year expenses. So um, we'll always start the year with at least maybe 30,000, um, just to make sure we can cover those beginning of the year expenses that are needed. But I project that by the end of the year, um, if we don't spend over our budget of expenses, we'll be at 43. That's that. Who's next? All right. Yeah. Man, that was awesome. Hi, my name is Jennifer Lee, and I am in charge of major fundraising. Um, the first fundraiser that we're going to do, we have two major fundraisers. Um, Nikki kind of covered it a little bit. Um, but we are having our fall fundraiser coming up in about two weeks. It's going to take place September 21st through October 10th. And if you remember from previous years, this is where the kids came home and bugged you to send in their emails. So that is going to happen again this year. Um, we did debate many different organizations that helped with fundraising, but we determined that this was the best one for us. Um, the, the Golden Ticket Will Come Home and Fundraiser Assembly will kick off on the 21st. We did renegotiate the contract to include 70% cash back, which originally was 50%. So that was an interesting bonus for us. And we did, um, the, last year we always had three prizes for the Golden Ticket. This year we're only going to have one, um, that we were not spending all of our money on prizes. And you don't have a bunch of junk in your house. <laughs> Um, we're going to do three prize achievement levels. The prizes will be given at $50 donation, $150, and $250 and up. This is a little bit different than last year, um, just because we wanted to um, not be taking home all that prize money. And then the Day of Awesomeness, that's the day where we have all the inflatables. Um, we have lots of volunteers that come and help, and the kids just basically have a party at school to celebrate the success, success of the fundraiser. Um, every kid is invited to this, whether they participate or not. And then our next big fundraiser is the Spring Carnival. Um, this is the third year that we're doing it. We are starting it out on Saturday, March 23rd. This is on Saturday. Um, and so everybody hopefully can attend, even the working parents. Um, it, the rain date is April 20th, because we cannot do the carnival if it's raining. OK, uh, for the carnival, we have lots of different ways to volunteer. I'm going to um, go through some and give you guys Um, sponsor a booth or ask a business to sponsor one. Um, John is going to talk about that in a minute, so I'm not going to go over much of that. Uh, you can sponsor a balloon or photo backdrop. You can sign up for volunteer shifts during the carnival. We have all kinds of things that we help with. Um, set up, tear down, picking up trash, all kinds of things. Um, donate a silent auction item. We do run a silent auction online, um, and everyone really likes that. There's all kinds of different things that you can do with that. Um, participate in the online sign action, so you can donate and you can also participate. These are our top things from last year. We had front of the car rider line, first pick of a watchdog date, that was huge. Name the renowned hallways and driveway, reserved parking spots, and then what we ask is that the teachers all do some kind of group activity that you can bid on and um, students can participate in if you want. And do you mind if we talk about this? So the last thing for the Spring Carnival is we have, um, if any of you guys were there last year, we have just a row of businesses that can come and support us, get free marketing. There's no charge for a business to sponsor a booth. Um, and it doesn't have to be a business. It can be a group of friends who want to just have a booth, something fun for the kids. Um, all you have to do is provide like a fun carnival game like uh, cornhole or something like that and a small little prize, which could be like little candy or stickers. And in return, you get to support our school. You get to have uh, a fun activity for the children. And you also get just free marketing. You can give away um, anything that helps you with your business signage, make contacts, connections. Um, we've had a lot of success with it in the past. And um, that's another way that you can help our carnival um, just be more fun. Um, so it doesn't actually bring you money, but um, it just makes it fun. <laughs> Next is going to be philanthropy, and our media for that is to that. 
So my understanding is that uh, philanthropy has always been a part of the PTO, but last year they decided to formalize a committee to make it a bigger part of what we do each year. Um, and as Nikki mentioned, one of the biggest pieces of that this year will be sponsoring Emory Elementary. We've already done a supply drive for Emory. Thank you to all those that donated to that. Um, that was pretty exciting. And um, we have formed the committee. Right now, the committee is just myself with the support of Jen and Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody out there wants to help with this, it's been really fun to talk to my daughter and my son about it, uh, to remind them that most of us come from very fortunate situations. And so to be able to give back um, is really exciting for me to help out with that. You'll see some of the events that we're doing this year. Um, again, we've partnered with Emory. The next Emory event coming up is a uh, teacher uh, support sometime this month where we'll be maybe going in for a breakfast or a lunch. So we'd love some uh, extra hands for that. We are doing the penny drive again. Um, that will be going to the police department this year. That took a lot of help from many people last year. And again, we'll need some supporting hands for that as well. And then you see some other possible projects there uh, on the bottom. We're going to attempt to do a coat drive and a turkey and food drive for Emory. In December, we'll ask the um, Emory to give us some families and adopt a family in each grade level of the school so that we can support them through December. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of events not planned yet, so whoever might be interested in helping out, I'd love to have some good ideas and, and uh, hopefully get some extra hands. Hi, my name is Becky Black. I'm one of the committee heads. The other two women, Jenny and Sandy, can't be here today. So I'm going to talk to you about how we can raise money for the PTO through corporate sponsorship and private sponsorships. So here are our tiers. Um, we can start out with a donation of as little as hundred dollars, and that helps uh, our school. And you get like a free Grinnell spirit shirt and a thank you plaque. And also, uh, thank you on our social media. And then it just goes up from there. So there's the next level of bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and VIP. And then you can see this helps corporations. Um, we'll put their name out on the marquee. We'll um, talk about them on social media a few times a year. And this money helps us so that we can have enough for our next year to support <laughs> <laughs> So please help us. <laughs> we are also going to be putting um, together a Google form so that if you want to sign up, um, and then we can get your contact information, we can get your business logo, and do all the things that we need to do to promote your business. Okay, and this is Jumana Ali. She's in charge of my Hi guys, um, it's me again. Uh, I'm responsible for the minor fundraising tool uh, piece, which is school supplies, uh, spirit wear, and spirit nights. And I have a few committee heads. Um, Rachel Joseph, right here, is responsible for all the spirit wear. So she has worked with us to like organize and bag and deliver. Um, she helps me deliver all the spirit wear. Um, so thank you. And then for spirit nights, which are the fundraisers we have, there's a list um, on the slide ahead, which are just like fun little restaurants or um, activities that we can go to and they're all after school. Um, and if you want to go to those, a portion of the proceeds will be donated to Renown. And Anya Colvier has been um, helping to organize all of those. And the fundraising logistics is um, Justine Williams. She's not here today, but she also helps just, there's a lot of logistics that go on, a lot of emails and a lot of um, sorting. So just helps with that as well. So these are the spirit shirts. The um, sale is still open until September 17th. If you haven't had a chance to get one yet, you still have time. Um, there's two options. There's like a regular cotton option and then a performance option. And they're $20 for the cotton and $25 for the performance. And they will be delivered to your child's classroom. So these are a list of the spirit nights. They're all on the PTO website and they should all be coming out in the Red Hawk Reader as well that Meredith sent out. Um, and the first one that starts next week on September 11th at Chick-fil-A. Um, and you can do this curbside, you could uh, do it delivery, whichever what method, you just have to put right now in your special special code um, to get money back for the school. And again, if you want to just read the list, um, there's a lot of fun ones. There's Last year we added Bounce Bounce and Cypress Academy of Gymnastics as fun ones for kids to actually socialize. So it's a spirit night rather than just going to a restaurant. Um, kids can actually 
attend a parent's night out or just play a bounce house with all their friends, and the school gets like 15 to 20 percent of all their proceeds. And um, we've also continued with our teacher night, which is really popular as well. Um, all the students um, can see a lot of the teachers do volunteer their time and they are basically working at McDonald's while your children go there. And I think it's so fun to see, uh, you know, the bakers and everybody selling them food at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really, really popular one as well. Um, we also have AR Workshop, which it was new last year as well. And you can um, do crafty things um, with your kids, without your kids, girls' night, mom's night, whatever. Um, there's a lot of options. It's three days long, and there's evening and morning time available. Um, and that's it. And there's a few more to come. So just be on the lookout for spirit nights. They're a fun way to just give back a little bit to Renelle while also having a good time. And I'm going to hand it over to Erica. She is the um, board member in charge of membership and group parents. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica Zelenak. Um, so membership this year was a little bit different. With your membership, we are we're giving free yard signs. Um, we were able to do that because we bought them in bulk at the beginning of the summer. So when they run out, they're no longer available, and they're only available with the purchase of membership. So to join PTO, it's $15. That $15 is going to all of the, like, it helps with what they all listed here in the budget of our total expenses. Um, and this is just a fun way to kind of incentivize people to join PTO and, and to um, to make it feel like the community of Renault Redhawks. Because now that I drive through and I see all the signs in people's yards, I really, like, it feels like we're just connected in that way. Um, and so, yes, they're going to run out soon. So if you haven't already joined PTO, I encourage you to. Um, and I think at the end, Heather's going to walk you all through how to do that if you aren't sure yet. OK, and then this grade party. These are my committee heads. Um, <laughs> Shirley, Bonnie. Um, this grade party last year was with all of the parties. This year, they moved it to um, Membership and homeroom parents because fifth grade is kind of a class thing. Well, it is a class thing. Um, and so this year is going to be a little bit different. We're actually going to have a fifth grade committee. So if you are a fifth grade parent interested in helping with fifth grade party, you can scan that QR code and you can sign on the form. And then once I get your information on the form, I'm going to add you to band app. So you'll also have to download bands, um, and that will be how we communicate for the rest of the school year so that you can get involved in everything fifth grade. Um, fifth grade party, as Nikki said, we get a little bit of money from PTO, but the rest is completely fundraised. Um, and last year, it was about $10,000. This year, we're expecting it to be at least $10,000, but we did get approval. Thank you, Mrs. Acres, um, to have an off-site fifth grade party. So we're super excited about that, and we're currently working on where it's going to be and um, how we can get it scheduled because, and then, then remember, we pay for all the field trips, so we're also paying for the buses to get all of the fifth graders there. Um, and so there will be a lot of fundraising. Um, and then... And then we're going to keep some of the old stuff too, like the decals, because everybody loves the Red Hawks on the car top. Um, product distribution, everything that people are buying, we need help with distributing that so that it goes quickly. And then also chaperoning, especially since we're going off-site, we're going to need a lot more chaperones. Um, but we think that people will be excited to get involved. So um, that will, this QR code will also go out to all the fifth grade classes, and then I believe there's going to be an information night for fifth grade, so, um, and I think it's coming up next Tuesday, um, and so you should get the information from your fifth grade teacher, and then we will talk more about what you can expect for everything fifth grade party, but it starts now. We've already been designing shirts and calling. Last year, everything kind of started mid-year. This year, we're trying to get shirts out in October so that they can have them all year long, decals out earlier so that they can be on the hard top longer, um, all of the things. So if you would like to help, please join our committee. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and so what Spirit Shop is, um, uh, about once a month, we do um, just a small store where you can buy Renell themed items or just little trinkets or toys. Um, you send your kids with cash and they can pick out a few items from the shop. Um, the items are priced between 25 cents and $5. Um, and we have it, we used to have it every month, but with all the activities we have going on, um, we'll have it about four or five times this year. Um, and it's during the lunch period. And these are some of the items that we will be offering. Um, those earrings, Lisa uh, made those earrings, um, and the, the keychains. So those are new this year. We had a different type of earrings that we sold last year. So, um, what am I missing? Anything? We need a lot of volunteers. It's, it's on the next, on the next <laughs> Lots of volunteers. Um, so the number one thing we need are people to help work the shop. Because um, since last year it got so big, we actually have two lines instead of one. So we actually double the amount of volunteers. Um, and we usually split the shifts into, into two shifts. So there's like a morning shift and an afternoon shift. Um, so um, all of our information is communicated through the band app. We have more than 40 people on there right now. So trying to communicate that through text messaging or email is really difficult. So um, with that number of people. So um, so if you want to volunteer, uh, that, that's coming too. But um, that's one of the big things is that we community your band. Um, and also we need help before the shop uh, with inventory items, um, helping to set up and tear down. Um, and during while you're working the shop, you'll assist students with um, picking out items, making change. Um, making sure that they go through the line quickly so everybody has a chance to buy something. We don't want anyone not eating lunch or anything like that. Um, collecting cash and making change. And um, we also need help if you're crafty um, or hands on uh, assembling or crafting some of those things like the earrings, the keychains, um, and anything else we decide to come up with throughout the year. Um, and also ideas. We love new ideas and you know, um, we're pretty crafty, so if y'all have an idea, we could probably get it done. Anything else? Is that it? Okay. All right, next. So that's our band. Uh, that's okay. That's uh, the link to our band um, app so you can sign up. And your book is next. Um, Ashley. Ashley's back. She is my committee member yearbook this year. Um, and last year we had um, a really successful year, I think. And we had a great team, but some of our members left because they went to sixth grade. So we will need more people to help us, of course. Um, so we need help um, with kind of all types of things. Um, one of them being designing the photo layouts and backgrounds and the pages and deciding what pictures are going to go where, um, deciding what types of pictures we're going to include from which events and things like that. Um, we also need help with people, uh, help, uh, uh, let me start over, editing and reviewing content for accuracy and duplication, like for example, last year, we had the same kids like five times on one page. So we had a really great person that was able to go through and kind of look at all the pages and say, okay, we should have five of the same kids on this one page. So that kind of thing. So that doesn't require any creativity. It just, you know, um, uh, and then we also need people to go in and take pictures during our events because what I found is if we don't go in and take pictures, um, we don't have a lot of pictures. And then the same people get put it on the same page, all the pages. Um, and then we also need someone or multiple people to help us tag those photos. So when you upload your photos, um, and I don't know if y'all have seen the links that I've sent out um, on Facebook, but you can also upload your own photos, but when you do that, it doesn't tag them at all. So the more information you can put in there, the better, because then I'll know what the event was, and who's in it so that way we can tag it and if we tag things 
you know, we don't know every student. There's like 1,200 students that we're now. So um, it really is helpful if you put the students' names in there. And then once we tag that student in the software, it will tell us this person is in 17 photos in this yearbook. And I'm like, ooh, that's a lot. Let's try to find some people that aren't already in the yearbook and put their pictures in. So um, that's the kind of stuff, you know, that we need help with. Um, and so what are we looking for? Creativity, of course. Um, people that are reliable because we do have a hard deadline. If we don't get it done before spring break, the, it will be delayed. Um, so um, attention to detail, like I said, with you know looking at faces and making sure it's not all the same hit on, on the same pages. Um, a flexible schedule only because we might not know something's going on in the school and I find out and say, hey, can someone go? and take some pictures for us today. Um, and I do have a camera, like a fancy camera that you can borrow, or um, you know, you can use your iPhone, but we ask that after you upload them, or, or whatever smartphone you have, that you just delete them from your camera after, or after they're downloaded, because we don't want anyone keeping any photos of, of kids on their phones. Um, and the ability to meet deadlines, and some computer graphic design skills. Um, and we will provide training on Encore, which is the, um, the software that we use. Um, am I saying anything? I think so. Um, we like to meet. I think that's this oh, is on the next slide. Okay. So we like to meet to work on the yearbook kind of once a month-ish. Um, so that's where that flexible schedule and reliability helps also. Um, it's usually a lot of fun. We meet at someone's house and we work for a few hours on the book and we sort of talk through pages and layouts and, and things like that all together. Um, we are going to be having an informational meeting on September 11th at 1. And so if you want more details on that, um, email that email address up there. There's also the QR code to join the band where we'll send out reminders and like, we're going to meet on this day, we need pictures taken on this day. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It is something, like we said, we need reliable people. But if you know that um, you may not be the person who can go up to school and take pictures, but you can tag photos, or you can get onto Encore at your house and work on some spreads for us. That's great as well. Um, it takes a group of people um, for sure to put the book together, but it's, it's I don't know, I don't, I almost said it's not hard, but you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's something that you'll enjoy doing. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Christy Polachev. You're up. Uh, as Corey said, my name is Christy Holachek, and I'm the program coordinator for PTO. Um, I am absolutely biased because this is my role, but I think this is one of the most fun um, because it really, all of my committee is about getting in and supporting our teachers and our students in classroom activities. So everything that we talk about here today is really an opportunity if you are interested in getting in the classroom, interacting with the students. It's so fun to see them interact with each other and the teachers and the school. Any of my committee's opportunities are going to allow you that opportunity. So um, first up we're going to talk about is our Science Resource Center. If you have a third or a fifth grade parent, you have already gotten inundated by emails and newsletter alerts. Uh, but our Science Resource Center is um, um, headed up by Katie Palmer. Um, she has a number of daughters at Renell, and she's been doing this a couple of years. So um, this is kind of one of our... Um, animal or experience-based opportunities. So the SRC has kind of twofold. One is we provide animal demos that occur um, twice, two to three times a year, depending on the grade level, at the campus. So you have an opportunity to get trained on animal handling, and it varies on the grade. I, I think third grade might have involved animal skins of some kind, and I was out. Like, I'm not interested in that nonsense. Um, but my son at the time had some cute little furry animals. So I was like, I can handle that. So there's all different kinds of animals between kindergarten and fifth grade. So you can get in and out depending on, depending on your own threshold of wiggly creatures. Um, but there is a training. The tricky thing about the SRC is that, especially for our animal demos, you do have to go in and be trained because as parents, you are leading those lessons. Nature Trails is a little bit different. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But the teachers will bring those students out to you during a period of time of their day if you're leading the program or you're leading that lesson as their parent. 
So you do have to attend those trainings and be um, prepared to properly care for those animals. It does also require a pickup and a drop off of animals. Um, and so just keep all of those things in mind. It's not you having to do each individual one, but if we have a demo set up for second grade, somebody will have to go pick up those animals and somebody will have to return those animals at the end of the day as well. So there's lots of different ways, <coughs> excuse me, to kind of do that. Training dates are set. We do have all this information set to go out kind of incrementally depending on the grade level. So if you're like, I want all the dates, you're going to have those dates in plenty of time. But the tricky piece about the SRC is there is an additional responsibility if you have to go get trained on those animals. But there are options if, you know, say I can't attend training, but I'm willing to help. We have, excuse me, we have an area where you can differentiate like, hey, I can come help with crowd control that day, but I'm just not going to be trained to handle the animals. So again, lots of different opportunities. The other piece that's similar to SRC is our nature trails. Nature trails is actually a field trip that our third and fifth grade students take at the very beginning of the year, like it's happening next week um, or the week after next. So the tricky, trickiest piece about that is getting those parent volunteers. Um, at this current time, we do require trained and untrained volunteers. There's responsibility or there's opportunities for both trained and untrained. Um, and so we're trying to get as many people signed up or, or indicating interest because the trainings are tomorrow and Thursday or Thursday? Thursday and next week. And it's the only two trainings that occur before those experiences happen the week of the 18th. So it is a bit of a time crunch. We've sent out a couple emails through teachers. We put it in the grade level newsletters for third and fifth grade as well. So um, if you're interested, go check your teacher emails. Um, if you have indicated interest in being a trained volunteer, we will notify you before Thursday if you are one of those trained volunteers selected, because we certainly don't want you to go get trained and then you're not utilized. Um, we know that that takes a lot of time out of your day as well. So that's kind of the SRC, a lot of science um, and experiential based opportunities for parents and students there. <laughs> Next is our Ready to Grow Garden. We have three coordinators this year. We're really excited. Um, if you're not aware, we do have a garden at Rennell. It's on, in the playground near our outdoor classroom. And it has kind of two functions. We have like a vegetable and fruit garden, which is kind of the one main garden piece. And then the other piece that we also have is the butterfly garden that just over time has not been as flourishing as it could be. So we really have an emphasis here that we're trying to get that, part, that butterfly garden piece taken up. But we have three coordinators for that. One of them is Heather Fletcher. She's been able to be here this morning. Caroline Navy and Emily Vessery. Um, all three of them are going to be working with our Ready to Grow Garden program, which is the program that we contract with to come in and teach those lessons. But aside from that, there is still a huge need for parents to come in, help with garden maintenance. And one of the new opportunities this year that we're most excited about is that we're also inviting parents to come on campus during those garden days with our partner program to help out those garden teachers and the teachers themselves. Um, and so essentially you just get to go out there, you get to listen to the lesson, you can help the students and that ready to grow garden teacher depending on what that lesson might be. And it varies from grade level to grade level, class to class. The program itself is targeted toward our third grade students and they go to the garden every single month between September and May. And then all the other grade levels will rotate out twice a year. It kind of just depends on where you're at in your curriculum. So every grade level has an opportunity, but they might be planting seeds, they might be harvesting, they might be doing a scavenger hunt to find different things um, in nature. So it kind of depends on the grade level, but this is a new opportunity we're really excited about offering to our parents to kind of, again, get in there and interact with your students and their friends and their teachers in the, in the classroom, if you will. Um, the other piece that we're going to be doing this year is redoing our butterfly garden, and that's going to be um, something that we're really going to come to our community and say, hey, we need help with this. Um, it's going to require different plants. Human power is the biggest thing that we need. Um, we've got to till up those beds that have compacted dirt. We've got to put fresh soil in them. We're going to add some pretty blooming plants to get that piece um, kind of back to fully working order. So if you are interested in gardening, I can keep humans alive. I cannot keep animals. I mean, plants. I can keep animals alive. I can't keep plants alive. So, thankfully, I have three very green thumbed assistants um, to help with those committees. Because it is, I it would be sad if I was in charge of that piece. Um, but if that interests you, please be on the lookout for those opportunities. 
We are going to be trying to, my committee is going to be trying to utilize our teacher newsletters this year as much as we can for those opportunities because so much of what we offer is grade specific. And so, and it, it varies all throughout the year in terms of timing. So those grade level newsletters are going to be your first form of communication. And then we will also post that if you're on Facebook to those Facebook pages as well, especially if it requires volunteers. So that's kind of our general process. Next is PEMS, which is what, how we shorten PE, art, and music. Um, our committee chair for that is Sarah Perryman, um, and she is going to be working with our PE teachers. We have two full-time and one uh, part-time, and then we have a full-time music and art teacher. And so one of the huge things that we do for PEMS is obviously field day. It occurs over two days, depending on your child's grade level, and it takes upwards of 50 to 75 volunteers each day in order for that event to happen successfully. So um, that's something that we've done <clears throat> in the years past. And then Sarah's also reached out to both our art and our music teacher to find ways that we can further support our music and our art program as well. Um, that's one thing that we feel like we haven't really, you know, kind of leaned some light on. How can we get in there and support those teachers and what they're doing? We have a wonderful choir. Miss Douglas always has all kinds of uh, art things going on. So we're going to be finding ways that we can get in and help both our music and our art teacher as well. So be on the lookout for that. Field day is in November. It's always the week before, or like that last week of school before Thanksgiving break. Um, and as soon as those grade level differentiations have gone out, we will get you the information. But kind of put that in your back pocket if you're interested in, in field day. And it's that week before Thanksgiving. <coughs> and then the last opportunity that we have um, on my committee is junior achievement. Um, this is the opportunity that I kind of manage um, myself, um, and this is an opportunity to go in five times over the course of the next um, academic year and teach 30 to 45 minute lessons, um, depending on the grade level, that are kind of civic minded. So when I started teaching this program um, for my son, who's my little one in kindergarten, I was so surprised to see what type of real life applicable, you know, applicable information they were learning that I, maybe it was around when I was in school, but it was so awesome to see them start to make the connections of what is a community? How, how is my part in the community? Um, what is the tax? How do taxes work? Um, what is election? What is an election? It was really cool to see how those civic-minded lessons are getting taught in digestible ways to the students. And the parents that step up and teach these lessons have the best time ever. The kids love this kind of break up in their day. Um, and so it's a really fun opportunity if that's something that interests you. Um, on the next slide in a second, you'll see that each grade level has a different focus. And the, the, from the previous year, it builds on itself. So again, over the course of you know, the six years that they're at right now, they kind of learn you know, what is it to be a, you know, a contributing member of the community? What's a job? Um, what is land planning about? What is residential? What is commercial? You know, all of those things. It's a really cool opportunity. Um, it's a very flexible schedule. There's usually, we like to have two parent volunteers for a classroom. It doesn't always work out that way, but it's great if you can. And you really have the freedom to figure out what that looks like. If you want to teach the lessons together, awesome. If you want to split up the lessons and teach them separately, sounds great. Um, it really depends on who you're here with and the teacher as well. The only big kind of change coming for this year is we're really going to be encouraging and pushing for our star testing grades, so third through fifth, to be doing those lessons in the fall. Every time we leave them to the spring, it gets dicey. It's stressful. Star can decide when they're going to change their dates at the, at the moment. As you all know who had you know, star testing last year, they decide, well, we're not going to do it next week. We're going to do it this week. Um, and so we find that in order to provide the best opportunity for both the students, the volunteers, and the teachers, we're just going to ask that those lessons occur in the fall so that we're not having to deal with any of that juggling that they're trying to do in the spring with star testing. Um, kindergarten typically requests those dates to be in the spring because they need a semester to get their kids to understand what is happening, what is this, you know, what does that process look like? So again, depending on your grade level, it, it varies, but that's just the, kind of the key big thing for this year. Um, this third through fifth grade we're gonna look at for fall. Does fifth grade go to Midtown for a field trip for junior achievement? There is no um, field trip associated for junior, uh, for um, fifth grade. So there is kind of two different opportunities for fifth grade. We choose this JA in our nation. Um, so each grade level has an opportunity, like you can kind of pick among some options. 
We choose kind of the classroom-based informationals. If you are teaching second grade, it's a blended program, meaning there's this part online, part in person. Online meaning just you use the computer, not like get your laptop out. But um, right here you can see it's very small font, but it's on the website as well. Um, just what are those general lessons for that J8? So we are going to start encouraging um, sign-ups to happen this week because as much as possible, we'd like to pass out those materials at open house night next Tuesday. And in order to do that, we need to have as many classrooms uh, signed up as possible. So you will see that information coming out fairly quickly in terms of um, if you're interested in that. So those are you know, just some of the wonderful opportunities you have to be inside the classroom, interacting with your child as well as their classmates and the teachers. So if that is interesting to you, please be on the lookout for our emails. All right, next up we have that. Hey, good morning everybody. I am going to be talking to you about some of the other volunteer opportunities that we have at school. I also wanted to give a huge shout out to Panera. They donated a lot of what you see here. It was a very good deal and um, they were just so gracious with what they provided for us. Um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is um, how easily accessible we're trying to make volunteer opportunity. As you saw when you walked in, there are QR codes posted everywhere. It can take you to the website. Uh, the website will have links to sign up geniuses or to the band groups that um, some of the uh, coordinators are putting together. So we want to make it easy for you to find information so that it's easy for you to help us with all of the amazing things that we're doing. Um, so, like I said, it will always be on the website. We will send out information on the Red Hawk Reader. Uh, emails will be sent out to PTO members with a link to website or sign up genius or other information. Um, Facebook posts with a link to the website or sign up genius or other forms of communication will also be sent out. This is the register to volunteer button that you will see on the website. When you click up at the top of the uh, PTO webpage under the volunteer link, you'll see this button right up at the top. It says register to volunteer. You do have to register through the district only once in your lifetime. So that gives them an opportunity to do a little background check on you, make sure we want you around our kids. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is the volunteer agreement form. This form does need to be filled out once every school year, just in case there's any changes to any policies or procedures, things that you are or are not allowed to have on campus. You can't vape, you can't smoke, you shouldn't be wearing inappropriate clothes around our kids. That kind of stuff. And this is what the volunteer page looks like currently. Right now there is a library orientation that you can click on. August Wiley is waving her hand back there. She's going to be in charge of our library schedule this year. Uh, her and Mrs. Fowler get together and talk about what hours each class is going to be able to go, how many volunteers are needed. She also will work on the book fair. Uh, schedule with her, uh, but first Mrs. Fowler wants to have every library volunteer go through an orientation so you know how to file the books, you know not to put nonfiction with fiction or um, everyone section. Don't mix anything in that section unless it belongs in that section. It gets really hard with how many books we have to um, fight them if you don't put them away, away in the right spot. So that is what's there now. Next week, it's going to look a little bit more like this. We will have uh, all of the volunteer opportunities that we have signups for. Uh, along with everything that everybody's discussed today, we will have picture day signups. We have picture days in fall, fall makeup picture day, spring picture day, class photos. We have a hearing and vision screening coming up that we're going to need lots of help with. We have candy grams that come up in February. That's one of the fifth grade fundraisers, or uh, student council fundraisers, I'm sorry. Uh, we have a benchmark celebration that's March Madness where the upper grade levels after their benchmark testing just kind of let the kids go out and play and release some energy because they've been cooped up for so long. And then we also have an opportunity for people to work in the workroom. If teachers need 
things cut out or papers copied and stapled together or anything like that, that's where you would sign up for that. So there's always tons of opportunities. Feel free to check that, but we also will send out that information. And here is that. Good morning. My name is Helen Julius, and I'm the communications coordinator on PTO. So, what does this mean? My biggest role, I would say, is the website, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, I also help with social media. All of the board members kind of post their own things on Facebook and things like that. I just do my best to make sure like nothing is missed. But I do spearhead Instagram. So. I saw some people started following this morning. Great job. <laughs> um, so next we and then I do a lot of the graphics, or not a lot, I do the graphics, <laughs> and the flyers and the notices. Um, basically anything that we have, information that we need to get out, I try to make it look cute. <laughs> and try to make it a little bit more appealing. Um, Spirit, I think you talked about a graphic was recently made that was like listing all the J's. So you have it, you can save it, you can put it on your phone. Sometimes I'll work with Ms. Akers to like get that printed and posted around the school and things like that. Um, the flyer for this meeting is created by yours truly. All of that. Stuff. So here is a screenshot of part of the website. Um, and then you can go to the next one. Okay. 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 okay, so this is our website. Lots of really great information about it um, or on it. We have our list of events. And it's constantly updated by board members, things that are going on. You can subscribe to the calendar so you can save it to your phone, and you're always in the know. Um, so there's lots of good buttons, like right now, you know, we're hitting our spirit wear, spirit shirts, the spirit night graphic. So you can click some of the things that are smaller, like on the sidewalk bars. You can click on them, you can make them bigger. Again, you can save them to your phone. And reference, we've got the new flyer for the teacher night that's coming up. The meeting today, uh, the Chick fil A spirit night that's coming up. Lots of great things. There's the yearbook pre order uh, button that's on my right. Uh, and then if you scroll back up to the top, please, you see there's all kinds of good information at the top, like at the menu bar. So, like, there's about us, there's the directory, which is if you've allowed your information to be released in our directory, you'll find all of that there. The calendar, again, you can go. This is just sort of like, I think it's like the first, I don't know, 10 events coming up. But if you click on it, it's all of the events. You can scroll through month by month. Lots of great things. And then, like, at the top, if you can put the volunteers for me, please. Thank you. So this is what Val was talking about a little bit ago. So these are just sort of buttons. Right now, it's a little bit empty. But it will be filled up very, very soon. So it's registered volunteer, the agreement form that was just discussed. There's a yearbook agreement form as well. So if you are participating in your book, there's something that they ask that you fill out. The join PTO button, and then, I mean, it's self-explanatory. If you would like to click on join PTO, I can show them that real quick. So, it, okay. It won't bring me to the form because it's been completed oh. by us. That's okay, but I wonder if, just log out. I want to say if I log out. Yeah. It should. And then just, if you go to the top and just do right now. Yeah. Okay, I think you just create a. The person I'm going to create an account. There you go. Well, it might say. Yeah. You have to create an account. Which oh, is crazy. Okay, so. Right. 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 There you go. Do you want to log it up or? Would you like them to? Yeah, because they get they think that they do that and they think they join PTO. Okay, so do you wanna do, would you like to talk about it or would you like to? I'm happy to. Go ahead. Okay, so you create an account if you've not done so already. So you go through the steps. I mean no, I don't think you have to. Okay. Everybody uses it. You don't get online. So you create an account. <laughs> And here's what's tricky because lots of people will send me a message where they think they, they joined PTO and then they haven't joined PTO. And it's because you have to get through this and then you actually have to go in and then click join PTO. And then when you do that, and I, I made note of all this, so hopefully next year it's easier. 
When you do that, you fill out the form for the directory. So you're putting your name, your child's name, their classroom, all of that information. And then after that, they think that maybe they joined PTO at that point, but you still haven't. <laughs> <laughs> then go to membership and click membership, and then you joined PTO, and that's when it's going to ask you for your credit card information. And then when you put in your credit card information and you hit submit, you think you've joined PTO? No. <laughs>
sign ups, all of that good stuff. So use the website. Yes. Yes, you can see them. Yes, the calendar you said? Yeah. Yes, it's awesome if you sync your the calendar from the website to your phone so that there's no excuses. You know when everything is going on. Oh, just what you said. Okay. So that is our next thing. Thank you. 